All right, next work in progress. Starting to do hand painting on metallic. So the first color I got going on is, crap, where'd it go? Oh, uh, Greedy Gold, um, Army Warhammer Paints Air. And I'm gonna go on and paint all these little, well, these little areas, this color. <laughs> and um, I'll show a little bit on camera. Again, I'm just gonna, I really need to have my Optivizer on, but I'm just gonna go in here. And it looks like one coat's gonna do it, thankfully. And then once I'm done with all this, okay, sorry, someone came to the door. So I'm gonna go and paint all these little areas this color, and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, after about 45 minutes, I've got two colors down. I've got the uh, Greedy Gold, which is what I did on those bigger loops. And then I went in and did Weapon Bronze on those smaller loops. And the Greedy Gold is three coats, and the Weapon Bronze is two coats. And this will all get cleaned up in the end. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and Start working on this little crest up here and i'm going to do um man they got a lot of detail in this thing uh i think i'm going to do everything like in a start off with a silver uh, i'll just do um da, 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 da. and then maybe the silver will make it easier to um cover with the next metallic Where the hell is that? There it is. Pale burnt metal. So these take these take several coats to cover. This is pale burnt metal, metal color, and this typically coats in one coat. I'm just gonna put a few drops in there, so it doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm gonna work on um, the center area. Thing is, you got to get around all the edges, which takes a ton, takes takes a ton of time. You can kind of get away with just doing this kind of dragging across the surface for this part, and then I have to go around and get all the edges. Just real, real lightly. So I got some paint down there. I'm gonna go back and do a black wash in some of these areas to clean up where the paint got down in the crevices where I don't want it. And then I come around here and I do this edge. this so this is what takes so damn long on these things so all this is really intricate hand painting okay about another 30 45 minutes later that's where we are so um i did all these areas and then i went in and did that silver trim and then I went back and I used the same uh, weaponized bronze on this part right here. And then I made a custom mix of the um, pale burnt metal and a little bit of turbo dork uh, bullion to kind of get this brass look in the middle. And I painted those little uh, these little balls that same color, the brass. And once that dried, I went in and I put in a little bit of uh, K-Colors candy hot red on top to make those jewels so that all that intricate area is done i'm going to just dry for a little bit i'll probably seal this and i'm going to paint this all this stuff and once i get all the metallics done i'll go in and clean up with um, a wash and stuff to clean up some of the areas where i got paint but it's looking really good it's just tedious and takes a lot of time okay a little bit further along this skirt is going to take freaking forever i mean this is just going to take forever um I went in and painted these parts, and for that I'm using uh, Evil Chrome. I actually mixed up a custom color for this kind of, I don't know, skull. 
And I know it's very close to that. This actually is actually really pretty color. It's like a rose. It's like a rose gold. It's super pretty. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do on this, I'm going to go and I'm going to paint these areas here. I'm going to tap every other little spot in this little trim here. And then I'm going to go paint these rivets the same color I've been using for the rivets, which is weaponized bronze or weapon bronze, which is really pretty. That's what I did all these little rivets. Once I get all that done, I got some rivets on the back to paint, seal it, do my pin wash and clean up. And then um, I'll probably dirty this up a little bit up here. I'll keep this pretty clean, I think. I don't know. It needs to be a little grungy because he's a predator. So uh, once I get to the wash part, I'll come back. Okie dokie. So we got all those metallics painted, sealed it. Looks really freaking good. Now I just gotta go clean everything up. So I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm gonna use uh, some just black craft paint as a wash in some areas. So I can just do that. And I can put a little water in there. Like so. So I'm going to use this like kind of on the leather areas. Let's see what this does. And we'll get some Q-tips to clean up anything. So like in here, I got to clean this line up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to get a smaller brush. Get too many cups with too many fluids in them. I don't know what's in which cup. I need to label these. So I got I have a cup with water, a cup with alcohol, a cup with thinner, with lacquer thinner, and a cup with uh, mineral spirits in it. <laughs> Depending on what paint I'm using and what I'm doing. I'm just gonna come in here. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna just flood it. I'm just gonna come in here and do a real quick. Touch up of this line. Just like that. And I'm just letting it run everywhere because I don't want it to run everywhere since I've got a kind of a matte surface. And if I do get some, I'm going to just come in here and wipe it off easily. Like that. I don't think this part will take too long. I better not say it too long because then it'll, it'll take forever. But my painting is actually fairly clean. Uh, I don't have a ton of mess ups to fix. Should I wait for that paint to dry? And just take it right out of the line that I put it in. So you let that dry for a minute, then it's easier to wipe up. It's blowing out for a little bit, then come here with a damp, very slightly damp Q-tip. And clean it up. Just like that. That's going good. I'm just going to hit all these lines just to. Right here, get a little mess up. We're just going there. 
do a little bit of a little a thinner version of the paint. So I got kind of different thicknesses of paint here. I can do like a wash and do more like a panel line technique. So Looking good. I'm gonna come in here and just take a little bit of thinner paint and do a little shadow. And then when I get up to the other, up to, I'll show you. I am gonna switch the oils here in a minute, so I get that same look that I did when I did the. Um, Metallics on the uh, on that first test skirt because I really like the way it looks. Yeah, this is where you go through a crap load of Q-tips because basically once you wipe it once, it's no good. This edge over here, just okay. That's okay. All right. So now in here, I am going to thin this out a little bit and just let this kind of. Hopefully, this will just kind of run in there. Take that out. A little more water, I think. Where I wish I had some hobby Q tips because they have a really fine point and they're not as fuzzy, so they're great for wiping up washes because they don't get down in the crevice where you're trying to keep the wash. This looks really pretty good. There's not a ton to, not a lot of cleanup to be yeah. honest. That paint's too thick there. At the very end, I'll go back and I'll hit these uh, little red jewels with some gloss coat so they got some shine to them. That looks pretty good. It's really in these little areas here that I got where some of that Vallejo paint, which is really thin, kind of. Filled in too much. You can see there it's running in to where I want it to go. It looks much there. There we go. Got a few little touch-ups here and there on the black. So up here, I just kept the black pretty solid. I did all the shading down here and kept this solid. Um, I just like the way it looked. I'm 
makes touching up very easy around these edges because I don't have to worry about blending or matching a color. I can just paint straight black and it touches up really quick. This craft paint dries really fast, which is nice. Okay, that's looking really good. Let's see, is there anything else I wanna, any nitpicky stuff? I'm looking at this from normal viewing distance, so it looks really good. Been here maybe. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, i switch back to my oils, which I still have here from a couple of days ago. Here's my mineral spirits. Again, we're going to use um, this brush that I've been using. I can reactivate it. And I'll just keep using this. The dirtier it gets, the, the better kind of effect I get. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take this. And hit this around these rivets. Hit this. I'm just kind of do an overall wash on this thing. This kind of skeleton looking guy. Bring out the details. And if I want to get some thicker, I can come in here and do some blending. You know, just let this dry for, and I'll hit with the hair dryer for a little bit and this little spot, I kind of want to dirty up a little bit. Just a little bit of oil here and there and dab it. It's looking pretty good. Okay, you can see that's kind of it's going to do exactly what I want to do already. It's starting to dry. 
Just getting this kind of this weathered metal look. All right, so I'm going to let this oil dry. I'm going to seal it one more time. And then the last thing is to um, just gloss those gems. And this skirt is done. It took that was a long time. Probably, let's see, a little over three hours to do this one skirt. Three and a half hours or so. But it's pretty tedious. And it looks good. I'm just always, I don't want my optimizer on, so now I'm judging this from just normal viewing. When I paint something like this, I have my optimizer on, I'm real close. But typically when I judge something, I judge it like this, like if it was, if it was on, the, on the model. So it's more realistic. And these little eyes with some black. No, I like that. I'm gonna take that out. Let's soak some of it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I don't care about this thing. See one little spot here, I can get a little more touch up on the black. But I think that looks really good. All right, more seal, gloss the gems, and then I'll be back. All right, here we go. This skirt is now done. Um, so I'm going to continue doing this to the rest of them. I won't videotape it because it's going to be the same process over and over again. But it looks really good. So I'm going to to my client. I'm pretty sure he'll love it. And I'm going to keep going on. Okay, so it is now Friday morning. And after about 10 and a half hours of painting yesterday, I got all the skirts finished up. And I started on the boots. So you can see here, I've got the um, initial metallics down. Now, this is a little messy. I haven't done any cleanup on this yet or weathering. But I got all the base coats down on the metallics. Um, and, this, and like I said before in the sculpt, the boots are, are two different boots. Um, I just, I just follow my reference, kind of doing my own colors. And I wanted to get these done because I had some custom colors mixed up yesterday that if I knew I didn't use them up, they would dry out. So I need to get those done. So I painted for about a little, almost 11 hours yesterday. Um, just arduous hand painting. So I'm going to clean up the boots and get those finished off. And then I'm going to, um, I, the only thing, I've, the only thing I got to do on the boots yet are there some little leather patches that get painted um, that kind of leather color I've been doing on the skirts like like here this kind of nice really warm orangish leather look but these look freaking fantastic it's just a ton and ton of work I was, couldn't see straight yesterday but once you get all the metallics and you clean it up and add a little bit of oil weathering here and there man they look really really good it looks like black leather which is exactly what I was going for so it's got a little bit of a sheen to it uh, it's not completely flat, which is nice. So it's got, it looks like leather. Um, the metallics look great. When you first put them on, they look way too clean. So after you go in and do the weathering, and it's very subtle. I just go in there with a little bit of the oils and just kind of dab it on here and there, like I was showing, and just to kind of tone them down a little bit and just blend it all in. It looks really nice. This gold right here looks fantastic after you do a little weathering on it. The only part that's 100% uh, clean is the crest on the back skirt. This was the test panel we started with. Um, looks really good. And then the back skirt, which took about almost four hours to paint just by itself, uh, just because of all the arduous, all this. Now, in camera, these look the same color, but as I told you, these are different colors. We got a gold and like a nice copper right there. So they are different colors. It's a subtle difference, but this, it is different. 
So I'm going to continue with the boots, get those cleaned up and uh, finish painting. My goal today is to finish this part and possibly the upper torso over there. We'll see. Um, I'm actually going to probably do some masking, some silly putty work and do some spraying because some of these parts are really big that need metallics. And these paints, what takes so long is that these colors need multiple, multiple coats, three, four coats to cover 100%. Um, so if I, th I think I'm, my time is better used on big stuff like this, silly putting it off and then spraying and then touching up the edges. Um, but yeah, so we're going to continue working. And then uh, if I have something different to show, I'll show that uh, when I get to it. Oh, okay. And with that, the waist and boots are done. I unmasked the feet and the legs and put the skirts on. And I think this is looking pretty freaking badass. So really happy with everything, how everything's working together. You never know until you take the tape off how things are looking. But uh, really happy with this. Um, details are popping. Hand paint. Or I, masked, I masked off this part of the skirt, the waist, with Silly Putting sprayed on. Uh, Mr. Color, uh, this is their buffable paints. This is Mr. Color Copper. So it's it's buffable. And you, don't have to, you don't have to buff it, but you can buff it. So I sprayed that. Um, hand painted it in some other areas like up in here and then um, if I take some of these skirts off you can see some of the other details if I can take the back skirt off you can see all this detail up in here and even under his crotch is way up in there is all painted uh, let's see if I take this skirt off you can see some of the more of the detail painting if I take the front skirt off and look up the skirt again you can see up in there it's all painted and detailed so uh, really happy with this. So now I'm going to move on to the upper torso, uh, which will take a very long time. It's got a lot of details. So I'm going to put this aside so it doesn't get banged up or damaged. And uh, I'm going to move on to the upper torso. Um, we'll see if I can get that done today. I don't know. It's a lot. Um, but there you go. I'll come back when I have more uh, accomplished. All right. So I'll show a little bit more of this on the upper torso. I'm starting off the back here. Um, I'm just doing some dry brushing on these details here. I've got a custom mix here. It's a um, What do I have mixed up? I've got a Pale burnt metal with a little bit of the turbo dork um, Gold bullion or whatever the bullion color to give me kind of a nice warm Aluminum I guess and just real lightly coming in here dry brushing to bring out the details on this piece. I got a little too much paint on this one over here. I'm going to do a wash on part of it. But this is a pretty simple thing to do here. Take most of the paint off and I'm just making sure I don't get paint on the, on the leather, but it's okay if I do, I can, I can get it off for as long as I take it off pretty quickly using a chisel brush and get it right up in the edges here. And with the le when you have less paint on your brush, you can be a little more aggressive with the dry brushing. Now you got too much on, it's going to get into the details like I did on accident when I first started on the other one. So I have to. I can always just paint a little black over that spot and dry brush again. It should be okay. Just like that. Pretty easy on this part. See, so got a little too much paint right there. Should be okay. With the chisel brush, I can get right up in the edge there. And it's not going to get paint where I don't want it. Just like that. So right there, I got a little too much paint. You can see where it's kind of a solid color. So what I'm going to do real quick. I'm just going to take a little bit of my black watery craft paint that I have mixed up here. I'm just going to kind of paint over that area again, just like this. I'm just going to blow on it for a second to dry it. And let's see if that... Did the trick, and it did. So I'll be able to fix that area pretty quick. Just a little spot right there, I see. See right here where it's a, like a solid aluminum color. I don't want that. 
So I put a little bit of black paint on, blow it. And then again, go back very, very lightly. Actually, that detail may be, um, it's painting again. So it just may be a part of the, the casting that's not, uh, yeah, I can see there's a little, it's, I can't get it out, but there's like a little bit of resin sludge in there and a couple of little tiny details. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of stipple some black over it and just darken it down a little bit. If I try to get that resin sludge out, I would chip out some details because the resin is so, so damn brittle. If it's a softer resin, I could probably go in there and carve it out relatively easily. But with this type of resin, I don't dare do that. All right, so the little spots are done. That's, that was pretty quick. <laughs> I'll show you quick stuff. Um, looking at my reference, I'm going to paint... The center part, I'll probably silly putty that off so I can uh, airbrush it. So let's do that real quick. Um, got some right here. So I'll silly putty. So the areas that are big, like this circular thing right here, I'm going to silly putty this off and this crest. I'll silly, silly putty around that, I think. Um, and I'm not going to be super careful. I, I don't mind if I don't get... What I, what I want to be able to do is, is spray most of this and then touch up the edges. So I'm gonna do this relatively kind of down and dirty, but I wanna be able to spray, since this is a large area, I wanna spray it um, just so I don't have brush strokes. And the little area, on the little small areas where I, I have hand paint, I actually don't mind if I see some brush strokes here and there, because by the time I go back and do all the weathering and stuff, it actually kind of adds to the, the look of the worn metal. So I guess it depends if you're trying to go for like a really clean metallic look, but I'm, I'm being, my reference sees really, it's a really clean paint job. There is some weathering on them, but I'm, I'm doing a little bit more than what's on my reference. Just cause I think it's appropriate for the predator. So again, I'm just going to kind of go in here. Like this. My goal is to get um, this part done today. I think I can. If I put in a long day, <laughs> I can get the upper torso done. The waist and finishing up the boots and the waist actually took me less time than I thought. Um, I got those done by noon today. So that was about four hours to get the boots finished and the waist done. Like I said, the problem with a lot of these metallics I'm using, it just takes so many coats of paint to get really good coverage. Um, like these Mr. Mister Color metal colors, these, these hand brush very well, pretty much in one coat. But you really don't see any brush strokes. They cover extremely well, but they're buffable. So until you seal them, if you touch it, um, it rubs off pretty easily. It's, it's designed to do that. Designed to do that. <laughs> and... Um, I have done that a few times, used the buffing uh, capabilities of it, but then again, you still have to seal it afterwards. Otherwise, um, well, two things, this actually has real metal in it, so it will oxidize over time and it'll turn green. Um, so you gotta be careful, you do have to seal it from oxygen, but then you, 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 it's, like a, it's like a chrome, you can't touch it until you seal it. Again, I'm just doing this kind of dirty, and I'll touch up the edges after I spray this, but I can get this um, center, portion and mass and sprayed relatively quick I think and then I'll go in and hand paint the rivets a different color probably a the same copper I've been using on most of them Oh, that took about a few minutes to do that real quick. And if I'm real careful with my airbrush and keep my air pressure low, I can go ahead and spray that without getting over spray or anything. I'm going to go ahead and, since I got it here, just do a quick cover up like this. 
So once I get this part sprayed, I'll go seal this one little spot so I don't worry about disturbing the paint. And let me get an airbrush cleaned out real quick. I had a little touch up to do on a couple of the skirts, so I had to break out the airbrush and do some spraying. I'll turn my airbrush around. I can clean my airbrush out. Okay, so this is a Mr. Metal Color. This is brass. It doesn't take a lot, it covers very well. Like two light coats. Just like that. And then I can pull this off right away. And now I'll just go around. And any little other discrepancies I'll fix when I go do my cleanup and washes and stuff. If anything I missed. Let's come here with a little brush, or like the silly putty didn't quite get to. Just touch that up. But this hand brush is so beautifully. I wish they had more colors. They do. They, I, I only have this, and I have. Uh, uh, I think I've got copper. That's what I did on the ch on the waist, kind of belt buckle area. I'm gonna do that on the front uh, emblem on this. Actually, my silly putty worked was pretty good for doing it so damn fast. You can see as I hand paint, it blends in beautifully with what I airbrushed. There's no. You can't tell the difference between where I hand brushed and sprayed, but it was quicker to do the silly putty, spray it, and then touch it up. And I'll do what I did uh, on the, what I didn't mention is on the waist, that once I got everything the way I wanted, I did an oil wash on everything uh, with that shadow brown and a little bit of black in some of the areas to bring out the details and then I just went in and cleaned up the excess so I got a little over paint right there on the black but I'll get that that'll, that'll get touched up in the very end so when I'm doing this kind of work it looks pretty messy uh, until I start going in there and really I just got a little bit more right there I'll touch it up now this is a uh, I believe this is a lacquer paint there you go so that didn't take too long uh, I really can't clean this up with a toothpick. I don't think I can. I can probably scrape it off a little bit. But any little overpaint like this, and like right here, that'll get touched up when I go back in with my black and do that kind of stuff. So, make sure I got the right cup here. I'm clean all these two brushes. I'm gonna go seal that one spot real quick. That way I can handle this. I'm not gonna rub that paint off. And then I'll do the same kind of technique. Um, I think I may do this little part right here, copper. And this part, I'm gonna just spray copper overall, but then go in and do some uh, other colors. I'll be right back. Okay, one thing I'm gonna do, because I'm, again, looking at my reference that they did, which I really like, is on this little area, Just I just sealed this, but I can handle it. I'm going to take a little bit of this brass and just come around this edge. On top of these little details poking out. I'm just going to dry brush this on real lightly. That's a really nice little detail.
got a very little amount of paint on my brush and just takes a kind of dry brush. Boom. Takes that little dot right there, man. That's really You can go nuts on a piece like this. I mean, really, you could just spend, well, I'm spending quite a bit of time, but even more than I'm spending, I mean, that, that just that, la that little bit, man, that makes a huge, big difference right there. Let's see if I can get this torso done in like six hours. A little too much paint there. I have to go back and touch that up. Some of the guys, there's a little, little, some very minor casting discrepancies in these very fine details. So the paint's picking it up. So I have to just go to kind of touch up and fudge it a little bit. I'll do here in just a second. Okay. So I'm going to go back to this kind of custom aluminum. Just touch this up a little bit. real quick a little dot here I missed okay looks pretty good All right, so I'll seal that again. I'm actually going to go back. This one spot's bugging me, that really bugging me. Right here, this little... There's not much I can do with it. I can do like a little wash, I guess. I guess I want to darken it because it's standing out to me. Okay, so I'll seal this one more time. And then I'm going to hand paint some other details and we'll come back when I have more done. Okay, okay, we're kind of in the home stretch on this upper torso part, so... After several hours of hand painting and mixing custom metallics and all that fun stuff, I masked off the head and sprayed the crest. I masked off this part and sprayed some gold in there. Um, got the ropes painted. And now we're going to go in. It's still looking a little not put together because I haven't done my cleanup work and I haven't done the oil wash. So going back to my oils that I had previously, I'm going to get a little bit more. It's dried up now. This is a shadow brown. 502 up to London oils and I'm actually gonna just kind of do a wash and everything and uh, let me find the brushes I was using I gotta find the right cup of my there we go okay have my mineral spirits and we're gonna kind of come in here And it's best when you're doing this kind of thing to work in small areas because you'll get it on your hands, it'll get everywhere. I'm actually just going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of flood this and let this kind of go around all the rivets and everything.
And it's okay if it's a little messy because what's going to happen is as this dries, and go and kind of wipe some of it off, and it'll help stain the metal and just kind of give it some, give it some life. So I'm not being real careful. Uh, where it goes. When I get these leather straps, I'll put um, a thicker oil on it and we'll do the shading on the leather, on these leather straps here. But I'm getting all these crevices around the rivets. Just kind of play with the consistency of it too. The runnier, the runnier it is, the more it'll get into crevices and stuff, but if it's too runny, then it won't, when it dries, it won't have the nice dark wash look to it. And also, since I have this mast, um, I ran into this when I unmasked the legs, that some of the uh, mineral spirits were running under my masking tape, which is not the end of the world because it just cleans off with mineral spirits off the paint on the body, so it's no big deal. So this will just kind of help. See, I had some touch-ups there I wasn't too happy with that in that paint. That's okay, because I'll put this on there, and by the time I kind of wipe it off, it'll kind of give some, it'll homogenize it a little bit. Even though I'm not really weathering the black leather, since it's already kind of got the weathered look from just my airbrushing, I'm going to dab on top of all the rivets and everything. And really not wipe those off just let it sit again with, the, with it being mostly mineral spirits it'll dry pretty quick this gives a nice kind of tint to everything ties it together And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, um, I had a set of brushes I was using only for oils and I got them all mixed together. Or is it this one? Yeah, this one. Okay. So for this leather that I have going on here, I did my kind of same technique, a little darker color. And remember here, this is basically straight oil for the most part. It's thinned down just a little bit. I'm going to take this soft brush and tap. I think a shadow here. And I got a little bit of shading going on just from my initial application of the paint. I think I'm going to darken it all down a little bit. I think it was a little darker. Again, the more I tap it, the more texture I get in there, the more natural it looks. These aren't difficult techniques, it's just they take time. And it really comes together once it dries and you seal it. <clears throat> I'll get this a little darker in there. I'll use washes a little darker, so I'm going to do this again. And the very last step after I do all this is once I, I let it dry for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, I'll hit it with a hair dryer. But already you can kind of see this metal. It just looks more natural. Like the more random I am with it, the better it looks. I am going to go ahead. Uh, I got these kind of buckles over here all painted. Give those a wash. Sent photos of the legs and the waist to my client. He's loving it. I'm gonna, even though I got the ropes kind of painted, I'm gonna do a wash in there too.
Let's see as far I don't want to touch things too much. That was a little thicker there, it's no big deal. good so that's why I'm not doing the front yet I'll, uh, I'll get this back looking good and I'll seal the back that way I can handle it and after I seal it I only, I only let it dry for I don't know a few minutes it, it dries pretty quick so what, I'd like to get more shading in this leather oh I did have um I did this on the other stuff. I got some, I may have to get some more. Slightly brighter color here. Here we go. I forgot what color this is. It's similar to what I used in the acrylics. Just kind of back and forth. Yeah, the oils are great. Um, just because you can, you just can work the crap out of them. Okay, this side's looking really good. Got a nice shading going on. This side needs a little help. Once I get it, there we go, right there. It's like, how much do I tap it? How much do I take off? And I'm adjusting the amount, the, how hard I'm tapping. So I want to take more of it off. I tap harder. There we go. It's looking good. And I know that once this dries down, this will look really good. Just from my experience. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer for a little bit and I'll come back. Okay, it only took about 20 seconds, but I just hit it until the sh kind of the the shine goes away. And I'm just coming here with some Q-tips and very, very lightly just kind of wiping the excess off the top. And this was clean it up a little bit. It'll bring back some of the shine in the metal. And you can always go back and add more oil if you want. But this will leave most of it in the crevices. I'm very, very, I'm using hardly any pressure. I'm just very, just barely scooting this across the surface. So look at this compared to that. See how this is too perfect. This just brings it all together. Every little rivet's got a little bit of wash on it to bring out the detail. Now it's still very, um, until I seal this, it's still very, it'll still come off really easily. That's looking really good. Okay, you can take a little bit off of here in the center of the leather to brighten that up a hair. All right, let's come to this side. Oh. And wipe off. Actually, if I'm real careful, I can do the front without having to seal this first. That buckle looks really good. Very nice. Okay. Kind of same thing here. I'm gonna come in and do a an overall kind of wash. It's 
actually a little too thick. I don't care if it gets on the black leather because since it's black, it really doesn't show up. I'll probably, I mean, I did uh, on the uh, waist, I'll go back and do a little bit of dry brushing of copper on, I think, some of this, just to brown it up a little bit. Got a little bit of leather here going on. So this part, this part actually doesn't take too long. This is actually a really fun part because it's very loose. Just kind of do your thing. I will have to go back with some black and touch up some of the edges. Which is no big deal. My reference, they airbrushed these little leather strips on. I did my little stippling technique, so I think it looks a little more natural. Like real leather. That's just my opinion. I put it pretty solid there. I know that dry for a second, then I'll blend it out. The neck will have to touch up a little bit. It's actually pretty good. Too much. Also do the head while we're at it. I'll airbrush some eyes in there, some glowing eyes, probably red. mechanical details on the side. They don't go somewhere. touch up there I had some paint I got to get off okay again do the same thing I hit with the hair dryer and come back
All right, we're going to let the hair dry for a little bit, and then we're going to come back in and start wiping some of this off. Quite a bit there. Maybe got a little too much in that crevice there. So I'll do the hit the hair dryer again before I seal this. I'm gonna do some dry brushing on this crest. I don't think I did a wash on that part. You can tell because it's too clean. Okay, let's get the backs so if I need to do any more on here. You could do a little more pin wash right here. You, have to be, you do have to be careful to go back in after you kind of got what you want because anytime you touch it with some more mineral spirits, it reactivates and kind of could mess up what you got going on. Okay, so I think I'm ready to just really dry this really, really well seal it and then come back in and do it find a little bit of dry brushing on some of this copper detail in the head and i'll use a, a brighter color for that i think It's looking really good. We'll dry it, I'll seal it, and uh, dry brushing and final cleanup. All right, here with the hair dryer, sealed it. It's a couple light coats of sealer. And I'm gonna come in here, I'm just gonna take some of this uh, metalizer and do a light dry brushing on some of this. I think that's the color I wanna use. Let me go back in with the It's really, really light. So I don't want to lose the effect of the wash, but I do want to brighten this up just a hair. Just like that. And that little bit makes a huge difference. This is actually two-toned, it's very subtle. Up here, I'm gonna do a lighter color for the dry brush.
making sure I don't hit the rivets. Ropes look good, nice natural rope look. Super, super light. I hit this part a little harder. This you don't see a whole lot because the back skirt covers up most of it. Hit this detail a little harder. Now I'm going to come to, um, I'll dried out. Dang it. I've got some custom colors over here, but I think they're, they're dried out. Yep. Okay. Okay, clean up this brush. Try to get the right cup. <laughs> I'm smelling like. Oh, ooh, there it is. That's thinner. A little thinner. I'm going to use a little of this Dura aluminum. Or not the Dura aluminum, uh, pale burnt metal. A little bit here. Do a little bit on this too. Even though it's not the right the same color, I'll just add a hot light to it. Oop, too much. Ah, I got in the leather. Let's take that off. Crap. Good thing it's an acrylic, it comes right off. I'll just do this whole part, why not? Might look kind of cool. Yeah, there we go. Just gotta go with the flow. But there. A little bit here. And on the head, <laughs> sorry about the dog. I'm gonna do this head, I want to have very little on there. Coco, be quiet. There go. I'm going to hit it more towards this back part than the front, anyway. It helps with that on camera, huh? I have very, very little paint on my brush. 
That's why I'm going over it multiple times. I wanted to build it up very, very slowly. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that's done. I did paint the uh, little emblem here, the head emblem. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll come in here and just do a little dry brushing on it. Bring out the details a little bit. Try not to get it on the gold. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I think I need to airbrush that tip just a little bit. I'm going to do that. There we go. A little inconsistent paint. Okay, so I can seal this now. And I think I can seal this one more time. And I might be able to take the tape off. I think so. Make them in here very, very lightly. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, yeah, it's one that looks a hair brighter. Yeah, super, super subtle, but I'm just using a very flat part of my brush. There's a detail here that I painted a brighter copper, and it's kind of blending in with the background, so I'm going to brighten it up. I'm just trying to hit that just a little bit. I think that did it, just a touch. Like I said, it's, a, it's actually two-tone, but it's very, very subtle. Okay, I think I'm ready for one more round of sealer. And then um, clean up with some black. Actually, I can do that now. I don't need to seal it again. So I'm just going to come in here with my, again, my craft paint. A little bit of water. Clean up any edges. Clean up in here. I want this line to be pretty pretty stark so I'm going to go in here pretty heavy
Mining brush is great for this kind of stuff. That's looking good. Right there. A little bit right here. Let's see if I can get rid of it pretty lightly. Back of the neck a little bit. There. This is just the really nitpicky stuff. Stuff that just kind of st sticks out as soon as I look at it. When you first put this on, it's a little jarring because it's wet, but once it dries, it blends in pretty good. They actually sculpt it a little differently, but I'm gonna look at that shape. Okay. I think I actually find something later too, but for my initial. There's a little spot right there. When I can see, I think I got everything. But there's always a round of final touch-ups anyway. Let's put the headpiece on and see what that looks like with all this together. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go seal this again, and then I'll take the tape off and see what we got. Alrighty, take the tape off, and I think this is looking pretty, pretty sharp. Uh, looks good. I got a couple little touch-ups. I got one right there. Um, probably from putting on the torch, putting on the, on, the, on the waist. It rubs a little bit here and there. But uh, yeah, this looks really, really sharp. Oh, I didn't take the mask off the head. Let's do that. This is the most satisfying part of all the ma all that masking is taking the tape off and seeing how everything looks. Yeah, it actually took me quite a while to mask this guy. A lot longer than I anticipated, but it does make for a nice clean job. Just gotta be careful they don't. That is very satisfactory. Look at that. Nice clean paint line, no lifting. Okay, so let's see how long have I been painted in a day? Last, yesterday I painted for about 11, 10 and a half hours. <laughs> that was a very long painting day. Um, I've gotten my goal done for the day, which was to get this upper torso done and the legs and waist done. Man, that looks really sharp. Now you take the tape off. Whew. Pretty badass. I'm going to airbrush some eyes in for him. I'll probably do red 
and then this part I still have to go back in all of the skin and he wants uh, the glow the meta so I looked really close at my reference it looks glowing but it's actually a metallic blue and just the way the light hits it, it makes it look glowing so that's gonna be the very last thing I do on this thing is I'll go in with the metallic paint and I'll paint between these cracks so it's got this kind of it looks like a glowing blue coming from the skin got one little touch up there let's see if I can get that off it was uh, it was probably a, a little sorry heavy-handed with the acrylic and it went under the tape so if it's if I haven't sealed it I should be able to take it off with a little bit of a toothpick and just very carefully scraping that off just like that and that's why we seal stuff but man that looks really fucking good okay I think I'm gonna call um, yeah this work in progress is done uh, the, what's left is a lot more detail painting on the arms. I gotta do the hands. Um, those are the, the main the main four parts left are the arm the armrest and the hands. So it's it's the same thing: hand painting, washes, dry brushing, same thing over and over again. So I probably won't, I'm not gonna do any videos on that. So probably the next vid, the last video will be um, just it being done. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.